Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech Dad Info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. So here's a fun one for you. Uh, I about three years ago I bought a, a lockbox, uh, a key safe as they're called in French, that looks like this. Um, it's basically just a really heavy kind of armored steel, you know, unbreak inable, fireproof, theft proof, blah blah blah, safe. It's got the little keypad on there. Uh, you type the code in, you turn the knob, two giant bolts slide open, and when you open it up, you can, you know, you can put it out in, like, say, a garage or, like, a hangar or something. Uh, usually people use it to store, like, keys for various vehicles and stuff. As I said, I bought one of these three years ago, and they're pretty handy, right? You got all your keys and whatever else you want to store in there in a relatively safe place, um, and boom, you're done, right? Well, uh, for the last three years, it was working great. And then a few months ago, uh, it started doing something a little bit weird. So uh, you may notice here there's a little low battery light next to the keypad. And uh, what started happening is you'd, you'd go to you type the code in and uh, the little solenoid would activate so you could turn the knob and slide the bolts. So you could open it and uh, the low battery indicator would come on. So I went, okay, so I guess the batteries are dead. You know, I got to replace them every six to nine months or so. Uh, so I replaced, uh, uses four, four AA batteries, replaced all four batteries, and for about two days it worked great again. And then suddenly it started doing the low battery thing again. And I, this time I took the batteries out, I tested them, sure enough they were dead. And I'm going, okay, this is weird, so I put another set of four AA batteries in. And of course it ate those as well, and then I realized I had myself a problem. So I looked it up. This is like a, it's a Phoenix brand safe. Uh, if you're in uh, the U.S., it's, you know, different brands. But here in France, that's the, that's a common one. So I looked up their website. I, I thought, well, you know, can I get like replacement parts for it? No. So I'd have to buy a whole new one. And current price is, I think, 112 euros, which is like whatever, 100 and, 115, 120 dollars or something. So they're not cheap. So I decided I had to take it apart and fix it. So... Uh, let's take a look, and even if you don't have your own lockbox, you're going to want to stay tuned because I'm going to talk about a general problem with electronics. And uh, with the few little tips I'm going to give you, you may very well be able to repair your own gizmos and save some money. Okay, now I, I obviously don't have the entire lockbox here because, um, as I said, it's it's steel and heavy and it happens to be bolted to the wall in a uh, kind of like a covered garage. Uh, so I just removed the door. And, uh, right, so here's the thingy, you got your keypad, you type your secret code in, you turn the thing, and these big honking bolts slide open. Now, I'm going to show you what the actual problem is here, and I've already sort of pre-disassembled this just to make things go a little faster. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open her up here very carefully. I'm going to leave the batteries plugged in. Now you can see it's it's kind of simple. I mean, you got your big honking bolts and blah blah blah. And there's a little solenoid here, and when you type the code in, the solenoid opens, and that allows you to actually turn the knob, which moves the bolts. So it's fairly simple. And this little guy here is the electronics board. Now, right, uh, the deal is that when I open this thing up, what I discovered was that it looked a bit like this. Now, uh, obviously, I, this happened several months ago, so I had to actually clean off the schmutz. So this is actually virtual schmutz that I've sort of superimposed on it, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what the problem was. And you'll notice that between these two pins here, there was quite a bit of schmutz. Now, what I did is I actually took the little circuit board, I disconnected, you know, took the batteries out, disconnected these little guys here, and... Um, once it was disconnected and not powered, uh, I used some contact cleaner and just like a little paintbrush, and I made sure that I got all the schmutz removed from between these pins, and there was, you know, some on the other places in the board. Made sure it was nice and clean. You can use contact cleaner, which evaporates quite nicely. You can also just use rubbing alcohol. Uh, you just dump some rubbing alcohol on when it's not powered. You use like a, a, like a brush, like a paintbrush, and you just kind of scrub it until all that schmutz is gone. So the first question is, well, what is the schmutz? The schmutz is actually from condensation. So what happens is you have this thing, and say it's like out in like an open garage, and it's a hot and humid day, right? 
Well, what happens when a cold front comes through? Well, you get humidity condensing. And when you get condensation inside this thing, even inside the closed box, inside this, this metal gizmo, condensation forms on here. And if there's, you know, dust and particles and stuff in the air, you get that schmutz buildup. And what it does is it actually shorts pins together. Now, in this particular case, the schmutz here was, between these two little pins, was the worst. Well, it just so happens that that's the ribbon cable that goes to the keypad on the front of this guy, right? So let me show you real quick, with the batteries in, why that's a problem. So, okay, I got my, I got my meter here, and you can see, when I actually put the probes, I wish I had a third hand, when I put the probes on these two pins that were very schmutzy, okay, I got the probes backwards, so, right, it doesn't really matter, but just to make, just for the sake of clarity, I need an extra finger. Come on. There you go. Between those pins, you see, that says six volts. Well, that makes sense, because it's four AA batteries in series, right? Each, each AA battery is 1.5 volts. Four batteries in series is six volts. So, well, why does that matter? Well, the reason the thing was failing is because those two pins, which go to the keypad, had stuff between them, and basically, even when you weren't pressing buttons on the keypad or trying to open it, the batteries were discharging between the gunk between those two pins. So, of course, I did exactly what I just told you. I used my contact cleaner, my paintbrush, I scrubbed it, made sure it was nice and spick and span, no more gunk on the board, put it all back together, and for the past couple months, it's been working beautifully, and it's no longer eating batteries. So, if you have any kind of electronic gizmo and it stops working, you may want to actually take it apart and do that, especially if it's in an area where you can get uh, condensation. Now, uh, the company who made this board probably should have thought of that, and what they should have done is taken the little board and used some of this stuff. Uh, this is Isolier Spray. Uh, spray d'isolation. Uh, it's actually a uh, protective insulating uh, varnish uh, with a transparent r uh, acrylic resin base. Basically, you can see the little picture there. It's basically like a spray varnish for electronics. And in the industry, you can get this stuff on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description. But basically what you do if you have this kind of problem with any kind of electronic gizmo, if you find condensation and stuff, what you want to do is disconnect it, clean it real good, as I described. And then when you're done, the first thing you have to do is you don't want to put varnish on a board. You don't want to put, you know, this, this kind of conformal coating that waterproofs everything. You don't want to get that stuff on the connectors. So the first thing you do is you ta maybe tape up the little button here, tape up, disconnect these things, tape up the connectors, tape over the little speaker there, and then once you got everything that shouldn't be varnished, taped over, masked, uh, you just take this thing, you, you take your spray, you spray it on, and once it dries, what you're going to end up with is essentially a waterproof electronic board. So the next time you get condensation in there, it's not going to short these pins together because you have a nice insulative layer on there. And that's what we in the industry call a conformal coating. And this is something that's very popular, for example, in, uh, say, like automotive applications. Like you have an engine controller in your car, right? Well, it's in this super strong metal case. And if you actually take that metal case apart, the metal case itself is waterproof with waterproof connectors. If you take that apart, you have like a circuit board inside that has like a processor and memory and all kinds of other goodies on there. That board itself inside the weatherproof case itself has a coating of varnish on it. And the reason they do this is because if things aren't waterproof, you get problems like this. So, um, right, that is how you can solve uh, problems. Water is obviously kind of the mortal enemy of electronics. And uh, in many cases, especially if it's like a gizmo that's sitting outside in your garage or whatever, whatever um, you can hopefully take it apart, uh, give it a peek. And um, as I said, I cleaned this off for two months. It's been fine. There is no more gunk on here, but I know that probably within another few years, I'm going to have the same problem again. So I haven't actually varnished this board yet because I wanted to show you what the problem was. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually take my own advice and varnish this guy, put it back together, 
and Bob's your uncle. So there you have it. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.